Welcome to the Cybersecurity Operations and Incident Response course. Hello, everyone. My name is Dan Duran from Rhino Cybersecurity, and I'm incredibly excited that you are joining me today. This course covers cybersecurity operations and incident response. Here, I address topics such as working in a security operations center, performing threat hunting, incident investigations, and employing digital forensic techniques. In addition, we go into intrusion detection, escalation, and threat containment, and basically how to minimize and recover faster from cybersecurity events. We will also discuss attack frameworks, including MITRE ATT&CK, the Diamond Model of Intrusion Analysis, and the famous cybersecurity kill chain framework. Finally, I will lead you through the entire event investigation process before introducing you to various forensic techniques you might employ in your own investigations. This is the same type of instruction I give new employees who begin working at Rhino Cybersecurity in different capacities. I now want to open up this type of instruction to the world so you can become a better cybersecurity analyst. Lastly, in this course, I speak a little slower for those of you whose English is not the first language. So please, feel free to speed up this video by 25%. I think you'll be all right there. I hope you enjoy! All right, so let me introduce me. I consider myself a technology workshipper. I have 14 years of experience in information security. As a chief technology officer and risk advisor, my role is to lead the product development team and cybersecurity strategy for Rhino Cybersecurity. I hold a Master of Business Administration degree, a Bachelor of Economics degree, a postgraduate specialization in information system security, and also agile software product management. I currently pursue my Master's of Science degree in cybersecurity at the Georgia Institute of Technology. I am a Certified Information Security Systems Professional, or CISP, and am also an ethical hacker. Lastly, I enjoy cycling and I have a passion for computers, especially all things Linux. I created this course for beginner cybersecurity analysts, threat hunters, and incident responders. Although having a background in technology might make this course simpler for you to understand, it's not necessary. This training series will give you the knowledge to get you into cybersecurity. It will also help you fill in any knowledge gaps and lay a strong foundation as you prepare to be a cybersecurity defender. All right, first things first. Let me begin by defining what is a security operations center. Also known as an information security operations center or ISOC, a SOC is an in-house or outsourced team of cybersecurity professionals that monitors an organization's entire IT infrastructure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week to detect cybersecurity events in real time and respond to them as quickly and efficiently as possible. A SOC also selects, runs, and maintains the organization's cybersecurity systems and analyzes threat data on a regular basis to discover methods to improve the organization's security posture. The primary advantage of a SOC is that it integrates and organizes a company's security technologies, processes, and reaction to security issues. This generally leads to better preventative measures and security policies faster threat detection, and faster, more effective, and less expensive response to cybersecurity risks. A SOC may also boost customer confidence and help a company comply with industry, national, and worldwide privacy standards. SOC actions and duties are classified into three broad categories. The first one is planning, preparation, and prevention. My motto is more visibility, better outcomes. For this reason, a SOC must keep an exhaustive inventory of everything that needs to be protected, both inside and outside of the company. I'm talking about applications, databases, servers, cloud servers, endpoints, and so on, as well as the tools that are used to protect them. Example, firewalls, antivirus, monitoring software, 
intrusion detection systems, and so on. To ensure that security tools and measures are as effective as possible, the SOC needs to undertake preventative measures, such as deploying software patches and updates, as well as continuously upgrading firewalls, whitelist and blacklist, and security rule sets and procedures. To protect business continuity in the case of a data breach, ransomware attack, or other cybersecurity catastrophes, the SOC may also make system backups or aid in the creation of a backup and disaster recovery strategy. The SOC is in charge of designing the organization's incident response plan, which specifies actions, roles, and duties in the case of a cybersecurity incident, as well as the matrix that will be used to assess the success of any incident response. The SOC team also conducts vulnerability assessments, which are detailed analyses that determines the susceptibility of each resource to possible threats and the associated costs. It also runs penetration tests on several systems to replicate particular attacks. Based on the findings of these tests, the team remediates or fine-tunes applications, security policies, best practices, and incident response strategies. The SOC also maintains current on the newest security solutions and technology, as well as threat intelligence, news and information on cyber attacks, and the hackers who carry them out. This is done through industry resources, forums, and even the dark web. The second type of activities include monitoring and detection and response. The SOC monitors the whole extended IT infrastructure, applications, servers, system software, computing device, cloud workloads, and the network. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for signals of known vulnerabilities and suspicious activities. ASEAM, or Security Information and Event Management, has been the primary monitoring, detection, and response tool for many SOCs out there. CM continuously monitors and gathers warnings and telemetry from network software and hardware. Then, it analyzes the data to detect possible risks. Some SOCs, like Rhino Cybersecurity, uses what's called a managed detection and response system, as well as network intrusion detection systems and extended detection and response for EDR, which enables more detailed telemetry and monitoring, as well as the capacity to automate incident detection and response. Log management, which is the gathering and analysis of log data created by every network event, is a subset of monitoring that deserves its own bullet point. While most IT departments gather log data, it is the analysis that determines activity and identifies abnormalities or questionable behavior. In reality, many hackers take advantage of the fact that companies don't always review log data, allowing their malware to remain undiscovered on the victim's systems for weeks or even months. The majority of CM systems feature log management capabilities. The SOC team separates the signals from the noise, distinguishing real cyber threats and hacker exploits from false positives, and then triages the threats based on severity. Automation and artificial intelligence is used in modern CM solutions to automate these procedures and learn from the data to get better at detecting suspicious activities over time. In the event of a threat or actual occurrence, the SOC takes action to reduce harm. Possible incident response actions include continuous monitoring and actioning of alerts via threat hunting, Threat hunting is the process of proactively searching throughout the network to detect threats that may evade existing security solutions. Root cause investigations to identify technological flaws that allow hackers to access the system, as well as other issues like poor password hygiene or lax policy enforcement, for example. Disconnecting or shutting down infected endpoints from the network. Isolating vulnerable network locations or rerouting the network traffic pausing or terminating infected apps and processes, erasing corrupted or contaminated files, scanning devices with antivirus or anti-malware software, and revoking internal or external user credentials. The third type of activity is recovery, refinement, and compliance. Once an incident is handled, the SOC eliminates the danger and tries to restore the impacted assets to their pre-incident state, 
Example, wiping, restoring, and reconnecting disks, user and user devices, and other endpoints, restoring network traffic, restarting applications and processes. Recovery after a data breach or ransomware attack may also include switching to backup systems and changing passwords and authentication credentials. To avoid a repeat attack, the SOC leverages any new information gleaned from the incident to better address vulnerabilities, change procedures and policies, choose new cybersecurity technologies, or alter the incident response plan altogether. At a higher level, the SOC team may attempt to evaluate whether the event exposes a new or developing cybersecurity pattern for which the team must prepare for. It is the SOC's responsibility to ensure that all applications, systems, security tools, and processes comply with data privacy regulations such as GDPR, CCPA, PCI DSS, and HIPAA. Following an event, the SOC ensures that users, regulators, law enforcement, and any other parties are properly alerted and that the necessary incident data is kept for proof and auditing. The following are the primary duties of a SOC team. The SOC manager controls all security activities and reports to the organization's CISO, or Chief Information Security Officer. Security architects design and manage the organization's security architecture. A large portion of this activity entails assessing, testing, recommending, and maintaining security techniques and technology. Security engineers also collaborate with development or DevOps teams to ensure that the security architecture of the organizations is included into the application development cycles. Security analysts, sometimes known as security investigators or incident responders, are the first to respond to cybersecurity threats or events. Analysts detect, assess, and triage threats before identifying the impact at hosts, endpoints, and users and taking the necessary measures to mitigate and manage the threat or event. In some companies, such as Rhino Cybersecurity, incident responders are classified separately as Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 analysts. Threat hunters specialize in discovering and mitigating advanced threats, which are novel threats or versions of existing attacks that manage to evade automated defenses. Depending on the size of the firm and the industry in which it operates, the SOC team may comprise of other different professionals. Larger organizations might have a director of incident response. In addition, some SOCs include forensic investigators who specialize in recovering data and evidence from devices that have been destroyed or hacked in a cybersecurity event. For the best outcomes, The SOC must stay current on threat intelligence and use this data to enhance internal defenses and detection systems. The SOC consumes data from within the organization and correlates it with data coming from external sources to provide insight into risk and vulnerabilities. To stay current on threats, SOC professionals must continuously provide threat data feeds into SOC monitoring systems and the SOC must have procedures in place to distinguish between genuine threats and false positives. Effective visibility and threat management relies on a wide range of data sources, but it might be difficult to obtain relevant and timely information. Thus, automation is a key component of an effective and efficient SOC. Organizations may improve security procedures and better protect against data breaches and cybersecurity attacks by combining highly qualified personnel with technology and security automation. Many businesses that lack the internal capacity to perform the functions of a SOC resort to managed security services companies who provide the SOC services, such as Rhino Cybersecurity. In the next video, I will give you a primer into networking before we get into the cybersecurity operations of a SOC. See you then.